What it up? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our WS Tournament 2024. Coming to you live from the world's first Muay Thai Stadium right here in the heart of Bangkok, Thailand. I am Aaron Sarison Pan, and joining me is former Muay Thai world champion Antoine Pinto. Always a pleasure to be here alongside with you, Aaron, and always a pleasure to be here in this legendary stadium, Ratchadamurn Stadium. No better place than to perform or watch Muay Thai than right here established in 1945 at Rajnam Stadium as stood as the world's first Muay Thai stadium with 78 years of history. Rajnam Stadium is truly the home and birthplace of the art of eight limbs. The best form of striking in the world. A very different place now because we have entered a new era. A new era for Muay Thai and a new era for Rajnam Stadium. With the establishment of RWS Rajnam Nern World Series, one of the premium Muay Thai promotions on the face of the planet. RWS Rajnam Nern World Series gathers some of the best Muay Thai fighters from all corners of the globe to identify the best strikers on earth. RWS is giving opportunities to elite fighters at the home of Muay Thai Rajnam Nern Stadium. It's also brought prestige back to the Rajnam Nern Stadium belt and it's home to the world's greatest ever Muay Thai tournament, and that tournament is back. The third installment of the biggest Muay Thai tournament continues tonight on RWS. And tonight it is time for the super welterweight, probably one of the king division of this year. And of course, alongside with that division and that tournament, we do have some other fights. So let's have a check at the fight card. In the very first fight of the evening, the WBC world champion Yonis Anan will be taking on debutant Tong Sitjarunsa. Next bout, we've got Alejandro Roja from Argentina taking on Taha Ascari from Iran. In the third and last prelim bout of the night, uh, Mikel Sorrentino will be taking on Nikita. Moving on to the first bout in the main card, the first bout in the super welterweight division, Tananchai will be taking on Pavel. And former tournament champion and current Rajnamna stadium champion, Daniel Rodriguez continues his onslaught, this time taking on debutant Rassi Singh from Thailand. Next up, Gabriel Pereira from Brazil will be taking on Ruslan Nagiev. The fourth bout in the main card, the last bout in the Super Welterweight Tournament. This superstar is back. Rito Ada will be taking on Petmai. The last bout of the evening, Zaidania will be taking on Pip Kun Tong. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's start the night with the very first bout of the evening. So please welcome the fighters, Yonis uh, Anan and Tong. Here comes uh, Yonis Anan, WBC World Champion, making his way to the ring, followed by his older brother Nabil. Welcome back, Yonis Anan. And his opponent making his way to the Rajnamnon Stadium ring. Tong from Thailand. It's going to be a tough debut taking on someone as experienced and a world champion as Yonis Anam. But let's see how he performs here on one of the biggest stages in the world of Muay Thai. Probably what is the biggest moment of his professional career. Welcome Tong to RWS. And they can see the tail of the tape for the first bout of the evening. In the red corner, we have got Yonis Anan from France, 16 years of age, standing at 172 centimeters, weighing in at 117 pounds. He has a reach of 175 centimeters. Born in Chambéry in Thailand, but he's half Thai, half French. French father who's in this corner here tonight. 
He has a record of 50 fights at just 16 years of age. 44 victories, just six losses. Like I said, he is the current WBC world champion at 115 pounds. He's now, looks like, he's attempting to move up. And this fight will be taking place at 117 pounds. He has a great record here on RWS, six and one. And this year alone, I think he might be two or three and oh in the promotion. He's been tearing it up here on RWS, looking very, very impressive. In the blue corner, we have got Tong from Thailand, 20 years of age, taller than Yonis, which is unusual at this weight, at 175 centimeters. He weighed in at 116.7 pounds and has a reach of 174 centimeters. So even though Tong is a little bit taller, it's actually Yonis who has the longer reach. He was born in Patong Thani here in Thailand. He has 36 victories, 12 losses, and one draw. So, after witnessing the last four events here of RWS, where we saw the second round of all the other tournaments, it's now time to see what happens. And they can see, we've got his older brother, who's doing very well himself, making a name for himself. Nabil, who has actually fought here on RWS before as well, let's not forget, a couple of times. But yeah, now we see the second round, finally, of the super welterweights in our main card, which is the last time it will be the second round of the tournament in all five. Next week, we'll move on to the all-important third and final round of the group stage, and that will determine who will go through to the final four. But invaluable points will be picked up here tonight. One of the fights that we're all looking forward to, of course, the first fight on the main card, Tanun Chai against Pavel. In the meantime, a couple of young studs going head to head. Yonis Anan in the red corner representing France and Thailand. And we've got Tong from Thailand in the blue corner. There's PTT, Portoto, superstar here in Thailand in his own right. With the introductions, Mr. Beer. Sonica, greetings, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Beer, the voice of Russia London, and welcome to RWS Russian Live World Series Tournament 2024. We are live at our first Muay Thai Stadium, Russian Live Stadium, the birthplace of Muay Thai. Watching live to over 20 countries around the world on the zone. And it's now time to start their first preliminary fight of the evening. Are you ready? This is Rajan Amnon. Introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Rapin Soblik. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting for the red corner, 16 years of age. He's standing 172 centimeters tall and weighing at 17 pounds. He holds record of 44 wins and six losses, representing France. Let's hear it for Yonis Anand. We are Muay Thai. And his opponent, fighting on the blue corner. 20 years of age. He stands at 175 centimeters tall and weighs well around 16.7 pounds. He for a record of 36 wins, 12 losses, and one draw. Representing Patum Thani Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Tall Sintaran Song. Three three minute rounds at 117 pounds. is six and one here in RWS against a very good competition with plenty of knockouts as well to his name. The fighters meet each other in the center of the ring. 
It's actually Tong pushing back Yonis here. Mm. Interesting, like you mentioned, fighting a taller opponent. Ooh! Yeah, with that right hand, but missing Tong, who then fires in a right kick. Zach, recently, Antoine, I think you haven't been that impressed with the amount of French talent mm. that's been coming into the sport of Muay Thai, but it seems to have picked things up recently. Yeah, absolutely. Especially with Yonis and his brother Nabil. Yeah. Right hand there. Close in a few weeks' time as well over at Channel 7. We'll have the first ever French uh, France versus France for a title. Absolutely. Incredible thing. Great fight to come. Of course, Yonis at one point was also part of the equation to perhaps mm. fight for a title against another French fighter. Well, right now, he's going to go through Tong first. Taking a few right kicks already. Yes. Jonas with good hands, though. Keeps looking for that big right hand. Mm. Maybe a little bit of impatience there. Nice right high kick there from Jonas. Who also has a background in Taekwondo, I believe. Mm. We've seen a few spinning kicks here and there here on RWS. Oh, that was a nice left hook. Tom felt all of that one. Good right kick, right hand. Happy to fight on the counter right now is Jonas. Training, of course, out of Venom Muay Thai. Oof. Oh, Catch this time. Good answer from Giannis. Controlling the distance well so far. Oh, oh, oh and a big body yeah. shot. Nicely timed there from Giannis. He's doing really well here off the back foot. You can see Tom really pushing forward, looking to engage, but having trouble with the distance. Oh. Tends it over there, I think, from Giannis. But yeah, you're right. Tong was initially going in with right kicks to the body that seems to be working for him, but not anymore. It's all Giannis now. Oh, big elbow within the clinch there from Giannis. Good control from Giannis. Yeah, sometimes the referee doesn't like, especially here on RWS, fighters moving off the back foot. But whew, Giannis is working off the back foot right now. He's really frustrating Tong. He um, keeps walking into the traps that are being set by Yonis. Attempted left high kick there. Good oh. one-two combination. Again, going back to the body. Big elbow strike from Yonis. Yonis, a little bit more aggressive now. Two seconds in the first round. Looking for Fames as well, setting them up nicely. End of round at number one. Good work out there for Yonis and Nan. Like I said, on the back foot for the majority of the round, but in control of, the, of his out output. And uh, Tong, fortunately, walked into a, a lot of, like I said, the traps that are being set. He did have some success, though, with some midsection kicks earlier on. Let's have a look at the highlights. There, that right kick was working well for Tong, but he quickly abandoned it. And instead, it was. More of the significant strikes coming from Yonis Anan throughout that entire round. And you would suspect, as we will find out, the judges have probably have scored it in favor of Yonis Anan. Of course, it's open scoring here on RWS, so we will get to see how indeed the judges have scored it after each and every round. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, all three judges, star red 10, blue nine, yeah, it looked like he wanted to trade hands throughout the majority of the round, but yeah, I agree with you, Anton. I think going back to the body with those kicks, or indeed the legs, would be smart for him to do. Let's see how indeed round number two plays out. Since some elbow strikes from round number one from Yon, it's already a round number two. He's looking for it. Shot to the body, then a left hook there from Jonas. Good control from Jonas. Oh! oh! <laughs> Perhaps that's why Tom did want to use his hands in round number one. That's a beautiful time, right hand there. Much better now. He's got Jonas in the ropes. Do something in a clinch. Equally good work from both fighters. Oh! oh! Spinning back fist there from Jonas. And again. Using that left hook to the body. Tong 
utilising that right knee, you can see some markings on the left side of the body of Jonas, but that was a beautifully timed spinning back fist. Oof, good right kick to the body. Nice right kick back from Tom. Oh! Might have been a forearm instead of the elbow, but whatever it was, I do think it hurt Jonas and it got his attention. It seems like it. It's a great to... round so far oh, from oh. Tom. Good knee strike though from Jonas. A more even round though so far. Remember, you only need to win the round. You don't have to necessarily come out on top or show big dominance. Just do enough to win the round and then it goes to a judgment round, of course, in round number three. And so far, Tong at least is giving the judges something to think about here. A lot more so than oh. round number one, but a beautifully timed shot again to the body from Giannis. A lot of hard work from Tong though, still pushing forward. Good left high kick there from Giannis. Seems like Giannis is just a little bit faster than Tong. You're right. He's just making quicker decisions. Oh, nice tip there. He's looking for that big right hand again. That time, blocked from Giannis. And it right. seems like Tong is looking to engage in the clinch. But great defending from Giannis in that position. Oh! That was a right hand again. Good left kick. Oh, oh, again with that right hand. Right elbow attempted by Giannis, but didn't have that pop that we've seen earlier on in this fight. Nice left jab there from Giannis. Moving back now, a lot quicker than he was doing in round number one. I'm showing a little bit more respect to Tong, I think. Still a lot of work from Giannis in the clinch. Oh. Going back to the body, but I think it deflected. Oh, oh. both fights looking for elbow strikes. Good left kick there from Giannis. Been a super active fight here for both these talents. It's like you said, Antoine, he's looking for that clinch. I'm not really sure why. Giannis in great shape as well, not really slowing down at all. Oh, Ooh. good left hook. Oh, a closer round there in round number two, and like I said, it gives the judges something to think about. I do think that maybe, just maybe, Giannis did have the bigger moments in that fight. But a much better round for Tong. What do you think, Antoine? Yeah, a better round than the first one, but was it good enough, though? Yen is still more accurate. We saw a few good right hands, Especially just like this that. one. Yeah. But Yen is still in Ooh. control. And again, I do think that Tong was looking to engage in the clinch, but Yen is still able to land at knees, having a good position with that right hand, though. Perhaps what he needs. Yeah, knocking the head back. Oh, indeed, both fighters knocking each other's head backs in that round. <laughs> Much more aggression shown by Tong. But was it enough to take the round? Let's find out. Ladies and gentlemen, in the second round, all three judges score red 10, blue 9. For the total score, all three judges score 22-18. Hopefully, for our sake, Tong will come out and perform exactly like he did in round number two mm. and make a good go of this fight. Let's see what happens here in the third and final round. Knockdown needed for Tong. Yeah, he's looking for that right hand. Now you can see the way Jonas is fighting, defending, waiting for that right hand. Yeah, I mean, if Tong wants to start switching things up and maybe deliver that right hand to the body instead, it's wide open. Because uh, Giannis is expecting it to come, like you said, Antoine, to the head. But it looks like Giannis is just now going to try and toy around with Tong and not allow him to get too close to throw that punch. And if he indeed does try it, it'll be blocked. Jonas just looking to neutralize the game plan of Tom, which is to knock him out with that right hand. Yeah, you can see he's throwing a lot of left jabs, some kicks to the body now. Just for, trying to frustrate Tom. I'm trying to settle this fight. Oh, nice low kick. Elbow attempt there, I believe, from Jonas. Another attempted right hand there from Tom, but a little bit too wide of the mark. 
I mean, obviously it worked for him on a couple of occasions in uh, round number two. Hey, there's that spinning back kick we were talking about. Yeah, again, he's throwing that right hand, but it's just too easy for Giannis to scout. He knows it's coming. Once again, you can see Giannis just trying to neutralize, throw that right hand, tie him up. Way too easy for Giannis right now. Tong pushing forward without really having a game plan. Yeah. You can see relentlessly trying to get close. Great job there from Giannis. So smart, so intelligent for 16 years of age. And another big right hand. Nice right kicks in the body there from Tong. Triple right hand from Giannis. Yeah, good footwork there as well by the young French fighter. Going back to the body. That time with a nice uppercut right hand. Still staying active, which will... Again, frustrate Tong. He just keeps trying to throw that big one at Hail Mary right hand. See the referee just telling Giannis to not move backwards. I don't think he's going to listen <laughs> at this point in the fight. 40 seconds left. And another a... round that might as well go in favor of Giannis. Oh, oh. And once again, a second spinning back fist on target for Giannis been a very disciplined display here from Giannis here in the third round. Oh, 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 oh. right hand there. Good stand knee. Beautiful stepping knee. Spear knee to that body. It's going to be too little, too late, I think. It's going to be another victory here in RWS for Giannis. He'll take his record to 7-1 and one from eight fights. Tremendous for the WBC world champion. See, there's a, probably from one of those elbow strikes within the clinch, there's a cut there on the head of Tong, and there's the brother, Nabil. Let's have a look at the highlights from the fight. Beautiful combination going to the body and a left hook. Combination, I think, that Ritiwadar knocked out his opponent in the first round, in the first stage of the tournament a few weeks back. Of course, Ratiwidar in the main event here later tonight. But a great victory, calm, composed, on target for Yonis Anan. And not taking too much damage, of course, which is always pleasing. Beautiful spinning attacks as well. All right, let's make this one official. And then we'll move on to our second bout of the prelims this evening here on RWS. of Muay Thai action. We go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges. Score is about 30 to 27. Declaring your winner by way of unanimous decision. Congratulations to Yonis Anan. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the second prelims of the evening. Introducing first, fighting out of Argentina. Please welcome Alejandro Roa Sassi Propage. Alejandro Roja from Argentina making his way to the ring here at Rajdam Nurna Stadium. You can see with a smile on his face, enjoying every minute of it. Nicknamed Tuberon, meaning shark in English. Sorry if I put it that one. Great to see fighters from all over the world now training and now even competing in the sport of Muay Thai. Welcome Alejandro Roja to Rajdamun World Series. And his opponent fighting for Iran. Please welcome Taha Oscari Tiburon Simbori Fight Club. And here comes.
comes Taha Asgari, a very young fighter from Iran. And like I see, say week after week, some tremendous fires coming from one of the prominent countries in the sport of Muay Thai, making his debut here tonight. Taha Asgari, welcome to Rajdamnon World Series. There you can see the tail of the tape for your second bout of the evening here in the prelims at 120 pounds. In the red corner, Alejandro Roja from Tiburon. Sorry, his nickname is Tiburon, meaning shark. He is from Argentina, specific, specifically from San Francisco Solano. 23 years of age, standing at 171 centimeters. He has a reach of 167 centimeters and has a professional record of 21 fights with 17 victories and four losses. Says this is his dream come true. And the reason that he's competing here tonight is that he wants the money to go back to Argentina to see his two daughters. So he's been training hard for this moment, not only for himself, but for his family as well. He's training out of Sassi Prapa Gym. And back in Argentina, he trains out of KMT Fight Lab. In the blue corner, we have got Taha Asgari. Just 18 years of age from Karaj in Iran. Standing at 174 centimeters. He has a professional record of 26 fights. 20 victories with six losses. This is his fourth time competing here at Rajdam Nurn, but first time competing on RWS. 2024, he's had 10 fights, eight victories. Very impressive. And he said that he could not be more prepared for this fight. Training out of Singbury. Started training Muay Thai at just 11 years of age. These foreign fighters now training younger and younger. Probably one of the reasons they are now some of the best fighters in the world, no doubt about it. As they perform the Y crew, done before every traditional Muay Thai bout in honor of the fighters, masters, trainers, and indeed the gym or camp they train out of and represent. So Alejandro, the shark. He's actually competed on RKO two times, winning both by knockout. One knockout in round number one, another knockout in round number two. So is he going to make it three in a row? Let's find out. Says his favorite fighters are Haggerty and Rotang. So I'm assuming he packs a punch, if that's the case. Started training Muay Thai at just nine years of age. Incredible. So two fighters who have trained Muay Thai for more than half their lives. Two fighters who have had more than 20 fights as well. Taha just 18 and Roja at 23. Looking forward to this one. Actually Rod Tang and Ada, his wife, I believe are in Argentina right now. Supporting a uh, event over there. Speaking of, how you doing? Got time. Her sister, his uh, sister-in-law, will be fighting here tonight, Zaydani, in the last bout of the evening. In a, a post live. So I'm expecting all the brothers and sisters to be screaming and shouting on as Zaydani takes the ring at the last bout of the evening. What's the shark up to here? Well, you didn't see what Ascari was doing 
but he's snapping whatever Roja threw at him. Let's try again. <laughs> yeah, confident, just 18 years of age. Looks like you're gonna have to try again. Yeah, you're not getting out of the way of that one. <laughs> well, these two me meant business when you saw the face-off yesterday at the weigh-in. Standing nose to nose. All right, second bout of the evening. It's got a little bit of flavour to it, this one, hasn't it? And 120 pounds, Salihandro Roja in the red corner from Argentina. And Taha Asghari from Iran. There's Arm Sassi Prapa. And Baba Haji. With the introductions, we have got Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the second prelim of Party of the West. Rajamnan World Series. This is point time. This is Rajamnan. Introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Prinsha Sawikan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting of the red corner, 23 years of age. He's standing at 171 centimeters tall and weighing 120 pounds. He for record of 17 wins and four losses. Representing Argentina, let's hear it for Alejandro Roa Tiburón Sosi Brapache. And his opponent fighting for the blue hunter, 18 years of age. This time at 174 centimeters tall and weighing with an iron 20 pounds. He will record of 20 wins and six losses representing Iran. Let's hear it for Toho Oskari Simbolu Fight Club. Three, three minute rounds at 120 pounds. An international matchup. Argentina against Iran. Round number one. Nice kicks there from Ascari. Just testing the guard there of Roja. Side kick. Roja pushing forward. Ooh, nice right hand there. Close the distance. Oh, ho, ho, ho. missing by an inch. This is what I'm expecting at this weight. Fast pace. Taha looking very confident. He is looking composed. Eyes firmly on the target right now. Good movement back is there from Roja. Only three rounds though. Roja doesn't want to wait too long. to check, but I think this might be the first Argentinian male that we've had here on RWS. Mm. Oh, touch his right hand there. Wrong row. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a hey. from Taha. Yeah, Taha really Ooh. likes to tease, trying to get into his opponent's head. <laughs> the body, Roja walking into that. You can see, applying the pressure. Oh, looking for that right hand, constantly. Ah, successfully moved out of the way, spinning back fist, perhaps watching the uh, last bout. Mm. Uh -huh. Getting a little bit fancy. Taha on the other hand, technical fighter, happy to fight on the back foot. Oh. Good elbow attempt there. Oh, oh, big elbow. Oh, oh, oh. Massive elbow there from oh. Alejandro Roja. Taha putting his hands down. Yeah, playing with fire on that shot. Yeah, I'm not sure that's wise. Good kicks though from Taha. Oh, and they're looking for that right hand again. Need to the body there from both fighters, in fact. Roja leaning forward. Good uppercut that time, blocking the hook. 
from. Good work there from Taha. Mm. Decent in the clinch, another good right knee to the body there. Mm. From Taha, Askari. Huh. Really good work there in the clinch from Taha. Having a better position. 20 seconds left here in round number one. Doubling up that right kick. Good technique shown. And again, with that right kick. Got the kicks of Ascari. I think we've got the hands and elbows, haven't we? There you go, left hand there. And a right and a left. That's Roja with urgency. Moves oh. across the ring. Oh. Yeah, to think... at least claim round number one here. Wow. Not sure he has or not, but we'll let the judges decide for ourselves. Entertaining round of Muay Thai action here. Woo. Great way to end the round from Roja. But I agree with you, I'm not sure if that was enough or not. But that's definitely the way he wants to be taking this fight. Yeah, I mean, Taha almost fighting on the back foot for the majority of that round. Mm. Trying to show off. There's moments in that round, like that right elbow, left hook, where he looks compromised. But I've got a feeling he might be taking this round, even though Ooh. I think Rohat did connect with the biggest strikes. Oh. But from the highlights, it looks like it was Rojas. <laughs> yeah, let's find right. out. Let's find out. Well, maybe it'll go to Roja. We'll find out now. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, the first and the second draw score rate nine blue ten. And the third draw score red ten blue nine. I'm trying to ask Gary, you are telling him, please keep your hands up because those a couple of those big strikes did cause him some issues. And you can see Alan Andro Roja knowing that he's a round down now. Running out to the center of the ring, he means business here in round number two. Let's see what happens. This one's set up nicely. Good kicks though from Ascari, and those kicks have to be said were probably what won in the round on the two of the judges' scorecards, Antoine. Yeah, absolutely, as well as the clinch work mm. where Taha's Gary had the advantage, more experienced. Roja on the other hand, you want to make it dirty, you want to stay close, and wow! <laughs> Rolling thunder striking there, coming in. He's not in for touching blows, oh, and down right he hand. goes! Right hand! The judge. I was about to say, is the referee going to start counting? And he has. Oh, yes. Big problems there for Taha Asgari. You had a hold of the leg. Wow. But you could see the power of Roya. And no real complaining from Taha Asgari. So as it stands, it's a 10-8 round. He's flipped the fight on his head. And once again, fighting, of course, for those two daughters who he's hoping to get to see with the money that he earns here tonight on RWS. Now, he has to remember, he has to be clever. He's not chasing this fight as it stands. Mm. Good right high kick. A bit of tit for tat there as uh, Taz Gary did it to him in uh, round number one. Right kick to the body there from Roya. Maybe he's thinking about finishing the fight now. Like I said, he's got to be smart. He's got to remember. Oh, oh. left kick. He's winning this fight. Right kick to the body there from Asgari. Both fighters were still need to win the last round though. If we want to have at least one person who wins it. The Ascari on the back foot. Can't do that now. Ooh. Oh, good elbow there from Ascari, I think. It might have just snuck through the guard of Roja. Back and forth fight bigger. They're on RWS. Super Taha has recovered from that knockdown now. Needs to do something, perhaps get in the clinch, but surprisingly, oh. once they get in the clinch, it's defending clock now. Swinging. Oh, both of them. Wild exchange here. Mm. Good knee strike there. In the clinch, both fighters looking to use the elbows more than knee strikes. Yeah, a little bit of a scrappy one here mm. in round number two. And Tahai was confident after round number one, of course. Oh, that's a left. Superman punch there from Roja. Uh, he's got a lot more power in his hands. We've seen that showboating might not be 
<laughs> the greatest thing to do. <laughs> now it seems like it's flipped around. A little bit careless mm. from Roja. And of round number two, a round in which that man, Taha Askari, unfortunately was not Roja down. going in the wrong corner. <laughs> sort of sums up what we saw there in round number two. <laughs> Un very unpredictable. But Roja will win it with a 10-8 round, which means he will be leading going into round number three. Let's have a look at that knockdown specifically. Yeah, grabs a hold of the leg and yeah, Pretty clear knockdown, actually. Maybe and then you can see, see Ascari applying the pressure, oh. being a little bit more brave. And he did go back and forth after that. But it will be a 10-8 round, like I said, to the Argentinian Alejandro Roja. It will be up to Taha Ascari to try and flip the script here in round number three. Ladies and gentlemen, here in the second round, all three judges. Score red 10, blue 8. For the total score, the first and the second judge score red 19, blue 18. And the third judge score red 20, blue 17. 20 to 17 in the eyes of judge number three. He scored round number one in favor of Roja. However, it's 29 to 28 in the eyes of judges one and two. Taha Ascari has to do something here in round number three. Let's see if he can. A fighter who looked more comfortable in round number one, fighting as a counter fighter on the back foot. Oh. Oh. Has to take more risks now. Good low kick there from Roja, and again. Oh. Good combination there in the soft oh. oh. You see what he was doing? Oh. The left hook, knock it down to Haas. <laughs> Beautiful hook. Taha Ascari suffering another knockdown. What a, a shot. Roja moving in for the kill. Setting it up with those low kicks. And he might want to go back to the low kicks as well. <laughs> Smile on the face of Roja. Surprisingly, the corner of Taha hasn't... Ask him to oh, oh, go get into the again. clinch. Why? Roja firmly up now on the scorecards. Doesn't have to really risk anything. But you can see he's searching for that knockout. Oh, big elbow attempt there from Taha. Taha not giving up just yet though. I love the way that Roja set up that knockdown, looking down at the legs like he was going to throw another leg kick and then instead went upstairs, went up top. That really confused Taha. Oh, knocking the head back that time. 90 seconds left on the clock now. Two knockdowns. Oh! oh still a chance for Taha. Yeah. Now it's Alejandro Roja playing silly games, keeping his hands down. Oh, good left high kick and again attempted there. Oh, oh good left high look kick. at that. <laughs> Snapping right hand attempted there from Roja. Ooh. Having fun in there. Oh. <laughs> Left high kick from Taha connecting. I'm sure he's having fun. But I've got to say, probably all his fans and indeed his corner are probably telling him, just keep your hands up. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, oh, no, no, no. Knocking down Taha. I don't think the referee saw wow. him. But that was a knockdown. It was, for sure. Yeah, I think the ref was in a dead angle. Didn't see the shots. Yeah, I think he was behind Roja as he clipped him with that elbow strike. He gets away with it, doesn't get away with that left hand. 20 seconds left on the clock. This has been a manic fight. Tenti mm. Cockfield kick. Oh, did he kick him on the floor? I guess he did. That's what the referee was telling him. Yeah, perhaps. Well, they have it. Oh. End of an entertaining three frantic rounds here on RWS. Cartwheel kicks, knockdowns.
but he will be that man from Argentina, Alejandro Roja, who gets the fans' approval and indeed will be getting his hand raised here tonight. See a proud corner and a sassy proper. A lot of approval there from Arm. There, the low kick, and again, then he looks down instead. Goes back up to the top, bang, right on the neck. And then Corny with that beautiful time, left hook. Kick to Haas, Gary, proving that he has got a chin on him. But he should be doing that, you should be putting your hands down. Completely unnecessary. Something that he's gonna have to take out of his game. But the Argentinian with the power does it here tonight on RWS. What a left hook that was. All right, we'll make this one official. And then we'll move on to our final prelim of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen of the three rounds of Muay Thai action, we go to the judges' scorecard. The first judge scored is ball 29 to 26. The second judge scored 29 to 26. And the third just scored 30 to 25. The calendar winner by way of Huda Devos, the Sixth Day! Congratulations there to Alejandro Roja. Great fight. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the third prelims of RWS Russian Night Ball Series. Introducing first, fighting out of Venezuela and Spain. Please welcome Miguel Sordino. Representing both Venezuela and Spain, Mikel Sortino heading to the ring. This fight super welterweight, very fitting considering what's coming up in tonight's main card. He's looking ready, he's looking in shape. Let's see how Mikel Sortino performs here tonight. Fighter who potentially could have been in the tournament here on RWS. A knockout victory over Satan Far at this weight back in Russia. Could have easily put him in the tournament potentially, but he's got a big opportunity here tonight to once again prove why he is one of the best in the world at this weight. Let's welcome Nikita Gerasimovic to RWS. Tail of the tape for the third and final prelim this evening before we head back into the Super Welterweight Tournament for 2024. In the red corner, Mikel Sortino, representing both Venezuela and Spain, 30 years of age, standing at 177 centimeters, weighing in at 153.6 pounds. He has a reach of 188 centimeters. He was born in Caracas in Venezuela, but has lived in Spain before coming to Thailand. He has a professional record of 
34 victories with nine losses and two draws. Undefeated in 2024 with three fights and three knockouts. Fought here at Rajdamno four times before with a current record of three and one. Training out of Silk Muay Thai in Patia. We welcome Mikel Sortino to RWS. In the blue corner, we have got Nikita Gerasimovic from Russia. 29 years of age, standing at 130 centimeters, or a little bit taller than Mikel Sortino. He weighed in at 153 Sorry, 154 pounds, right on the super welterweight limit. He was born in St. Petersburg in Russia. He has a professional record of 45 fights with 35 victories, nine losses and one draw. Like I said, most recently this year, back in Russia, got a big knockout victory. I'm oh, sorry, it was back in 2023, back in November where he knocked out Satan Fa, Sit Song Pinong in uh, round number two. Of course, we've seen Satan Fa four times since then, but we haven't seen Nikita, so it's great to see him here on RWS. Indeed, after that knockout, he made a little bit of a name for himself. And he has been around the block competing on many Muay Thai promotions. This, of course, being his first time here on RWS against a very strong opponent in Mikhail Sortino. So, similar records in the sport. Let's see how he performs here tonight. Gentlemen, this sport is the third prelims of RBS Russia Nerd World Series. This is Muay Thai. This is Raja Nerd. Introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Krishnanath Bunyar. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting on the red corner, 30 years of age. He stands at 177 centimeters tall and weighed at 153.6 pounds. He holds record of 34 wins. Nine losses and two draws, representing Venezuela and España. Let's go for Miguel Saldino, Sil Muerte. And this opponent fighting from the blue corner, 29 years of age. He stands 180 centimeters tall and weighs 154 pounds. He holds record of 35 wins, 9 losses, and 1 draw. Representing Russia, let's hear it for Nikita Gerasimovic, Muay Thai Academy. Perfect third and final prelim bout before we head into the Super Welterweight Tournament in our main card. Let's see how this one turns out. Mikel Sortino is looking big, isn't he? For this weight, it's more like a middleweight almost. Nikita has performed here on the RKO show. Grabs them no knockout. But like I said, first time on RWS. Oof. Training out of uh, Muay Thai Academy when he does come to Thailand. Oh! Which means he's probably been sparring or training with Pavel Raishanovic, who will be trained, who will be fighting next up against Tanan China. Incredible opening bout of the main card. Good kicks to the body here by Nikita. Oh, oh! Spinning kick. He loves those kicks and those punches to the body. In fact, he knocked out his Thai opponent here on RKO via a shot to the body. Mikhail struggling a little bit in the clinch there. Both fighters keeping their hands up. Oh, good right hand there from Sortino. He's looking to close that distance. He's walking into the clinch though. Of Nikita, who seems to have Ooh. the better of the two within the clinch. 
low kick there. Nice to time by Sortino. A lot of power coming from both fighters. Oh. Great timing there. Ooh. <laughs> Solid right kick to the body there from Nikita. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a single block from any of these two. Blocking kicks with their oh. arms right now. Walked into that right hand. Took it well though, did Sartino, but back into the clinch. And once again, Nikita, oh, looking for an elbow strike as well, but delivering some good knees to the body. You combine that with the fact that he's thrown some kicks as well that have landed cleanly, now going for those hands. It does look like he's... The new crown body stature, Nikita carries on like this. Oh. Deep breaths there from Mikel. Sensitive left hook there from Nikita, doesn't find it. Interesting, the manager of workout is in the corner of Nikita. Oh, yeah. As well as owner of the gym. Oh! Oh! oh. oh. Right hook! Down goes Nikita, but it's just, uh, just to be off balance. Uh, it was, I think. Sartino pushing forward. A good moment in the round here for Sortino. Left high kick. Back into the clinch they go. You can see Sortino just does not want to be there at all. Yeah, absolutely struggling he is. in a clinch. Another couple of knees to the body there. Because of him losing the clinching position, perhaps will make him lose the round as well. Yeah, good point, Antoine. You can see Nikita. Oh. Using his brain and going back to the body. And like you said, that might have won him the round, but maybe the biggest shot of the round did actually come from Mikel Sartino, who almost got a knockdown. Deep breath there of Mikel Sartino. Doesn't want to sit down. Let's have a look at the highlights. Spinning back elbow attempted there from Sartino. That was a warning shot with that right hand, yeah. Just off balance in Nikita. But perhaps riding the bull, though, that clinch work from Gerasimovic might indeed win in the round. Let's find out how indeed Kirchis 1, 2, and 3 have scored this one. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, the first round score red 10, blue 9. The second round score red 9, blue 10. The first round score red 10, blue 9. What happens here in round number two? You're in the corner of Nikita. You've got to tell him to go back to the clinch, though. Having the advantage there. All right, and here we go. Round number two. Okay, I'm pushing forward. Uh, right kick to the body. Martino. You can see that he's stalking. Good low kicks. By the very powerful Sartino. That was a beautifully timed left hand. A lot of activity by Sartino early on here in round number two. Ooh. Nice left hand to the body. Yeah, willing to take that kick to counter with a left hand once again. Yeah, you can see Nikita looking for that right shot, that right kick back to the body, looking for a left elbow, jumping in that time. Well, look at Sartino's low kicks though, are actually really hurting. Yeah, they are indeed, Nikita, a lot of power. Tell that, yeah. The from. size of his legs, <laughs> understand why. A lot of options for Nikita though. I'm gonna get in a clinch. Oh, and an elbow yeah, that cut is. the nose off. Mikhail, I think. Yeah. As I saying, a lot of options yeah, just for right Nikita there. right now. Using that right kick might be an option as well as Miguel is not blocking it at oh, all. Oh, right nice. hook again. Yeah. Once again. I mean, he touched his glove onto the oh. canvas. Oh, 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 oh. But once again, it wasn't a judge to be a knockdown. Nikita doing the right thing here at the moment, holding on. With some right knees to the body, that's smart there. A veteran move by Nikita. Nikita doesn't want to go back though, he needs to be pushing forward. 
More inside kicks there from Mikel. More knees to the body from Nikita. Oh, and now Mikel struggling. Almost looking like he was trying to hold the ropes. Oh, good box into the body. Yeah, left elbow attempted there. Left hand to the body. Not blocking those kicks at all, though. Willing to take the kick to counter. Back in a clinch. Well, if round number one, which just in favor from Mikel Sotino, can only guess from the output that we've seen. Oh, oh another elbow there from Nikita. Beautifully timed. And once again, it probably went to the same cut. The same part. Oh, two teeth to the face there. Make it twice. Sotino. But more knees to the body from Nikita. Oh, much better work there in the clinch from Nikita. All doing the right thing, pushing forward. Oh, though. another elbow through the guard to that nose. I mean, he was breathing heavily in round number one. He might be breathing more heavily now from all those shots to mm. that nose. Ooh, end of round number down. two. Great Seems way to end the round. Mikel Sortino goes back to his corner. This cornerman is jumping and leaping like he won that round. Another very interesting and potentially close round for the judges to score here in round number two. But like I said, I think if Mikel Sortino won round number one, I think he was even more active in round number two. Yeah, he was indeed. Oh, I mean, that was so close. I'm not sure how... Whew. I know he was off balance, but surely it was Sortino that off balanced him. Could it be controversial? There's those teeth to the face there from Sortino. And again. All right, let's find out how indeed the judges have scored it. Ladies and gentlemen, in the second round, the fourth and the third. And a second jar score red 10, blue 9. And a third jar score red 9, blue 10. On a total score. The first jar score red 20, blue 18. Second and the third jar score 19 to 19, even. Sorry, judge number two saw it in favor of Sortino and then the reverse for judge number three. He saw the third round in favor of Sortino and the third round in favor of Garasimovic. So it is a majority draw going into Round at number three, and that thing tells the story of how close this fight has been. Ooh. Oh, beautiful left kick. Oh, 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 oh. Give him the count. What? Okay, well, it will be a knockdown this time, I guess. <laughs> Third time's a charm with Mikel Sortino. Very interesting decision by the ref. Oh, solid kick to the body from Nikita. Well, it won't be close. This one, if it stays like this, it'll be a 10-8 round to Mikel Sortino. Yeah, absolutely, right now. Almost guaranteed victory by Mikel. Yeah. He doesn't get dropped back. Nikita has to try, try and floor him, or oh, being the first to try and knock him out. Mm. Oh, spinning back fist attempted there by Nikita Jarosanovic. Good footwork from Miguel now back in the clinch. He had a lot of knees. He does continue, of course, in the sport of Muay Thai. I think he's have to work on his clinch game. Absolutely. And the right kick to the body there. Sortino firing one back, just grabbing a hold. Smart move here from Miguel Sortino. Totally sure what happened there. One way of evading the clinch is just falling <laughs> down. <laughs> that blood flowing down the nose. Good lock kick, the block there from Nikita. And Nikita not, his legs are momentarily there though. Yeah, I think after all those leg kicks, yeah. the accumulation starts to take a toll. He's looking good here for Mikel Sortino. Looks into his corner. <laughs> Mikel Sortino ate those body strikes in round number one and two. He's ate a lot of knees as well throughout this entire fight. 
to the body. And it looks like, due to that knockdown, he's going to win the round mm. and indeed win the fight. And for the first time, we're seeing a dejected Nikita Gerasimovic now. And Nikita <laughs> out of options right yeah, now. He's grabbing a hold, but that's not going to win him the fight. One knee to the body, or at least one knee to the body there from Nikita. Hey, Mikel actually throws one this time. Both fighters looking absolutely exhausted now. A lot of output from both these fighters throughout this entire fight. So there it is, Mikel Sartino due to that knockdown. Will he be getting his hand raised here tonight? Good work from the Venezuelan taking his bow. See a proud cornerman there of Mikel Sortino. Let's have a look at the highlights from the fight. Those are those teeps in round number one. Both fighters finding and connecting. Strong body kicks throughout the entire fight. But there was the knockdown. Big knees to the body from Nikita. And Sortino took them. Continued to press. And indeed, did indeed find the knockdown. And we'll be getting his hand raised. All right, let's make this one official. And then in a few moments time, the Super Welterweight Tournament of 2024 continues with round number two. And we've got a massive matchup to kick things off. Ladies and gentlemen of the three balls of Muay Thai Act, go to the judges' gold card. The first judge card is about 30 to 26. The second judge card 29 to 27. And the third judge card 29 to 27. Declare your winner by way of you don't push the session. It's time to experience the heart and soul of Muay Thai with the amazing sound of Russian Peak Long Orchestra. Back to 
RWS Rush Edelman World Series Tournament 2024. And after three thrilling bouts, here we are, the main card, Ivan. Yeah, absolutely. Of course, all the other tournaments that are taking place this year, they've already had their second round. These fighters have had to watch on and prepare, and tonight they get their opportunity to get more points on the board. Now, for some, it won't be enough tonight, and they might be going home out of the tournament, even though there's one round left. It is incredibly important to try and get points on the board so you can then make it through to the final four. And like I said, tonight, some fighters might be going home. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, all of this to become the RWS 2024 champion in order to get that magnificent belt, Aaron. Yeah, absolutely. And one of the most beautiful belts in the sport of Muay Thai now, the RWS tournament title. Of course, a beautiful belt that actually contains part of the old ring here at Rajdam Nern Stadium. But they're not only here for that belt. Let's not forget, each of the five winners will take home a beautiful three million baht. <laughs> All right, so before we actually do get to watch the tournament, let's have a last check at the fight card. The very first bout in the tournament, the very first bout in the main card. Former RWS tournament champion, Talanchai, will be taking on Pavel. And then moving on to group A of the tournament, one of the champions from the tournament previous years, Daniel Rodriguez, takes on debutant Rassi Singh. Moving over to group B, Gabriel Pereira, who has one point from his draw last time out, takes on Ruslan Nagier from Azerbaijan. Ritavada, another former RWS tournament champion tonight, uh, will be taking on uh, Petmai. The last bout of the evening, a female bout, Zaidenia, will be taking on Pikuntal. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so let's start the tournament with the very first bout of the evening. So please uh, welcome the fighters, because this is the RWS Tournament 2024. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing RWS 2023 Super Battleweight World Champion. Please welcome Tanan Chai, the Slim Reaper, Sid Sarpino. Well, many men, I don't think they wish death on him, but they would definitely like to see him exit the tournament. One of the favorites and indeed last year's champion. And if the unthinkable happens that he loses here tonight, and indeed Daniel gets a victory over Rassisi, boys and girls, he will be out of the tournament. This is a massive fight for last year's defending tournament champion. Welcome back, Tanon Chai, Sit Song Pinong. To RWS. And his opponent fighting our Belarus. Please welcome Pavel Richardovich Muay Thai Academy. Pavel Grai Shanovich has five points on the board already after a beautiful knockout over Reza. Last time out, in fact, not only knocking Razor out last time, but he's actually now out of the tournament. And what a statement it would be here tonight if he can somehow find a victory over, like I said, one of the favorites and last year's champion. Welcome back, Pavel Grishanovich from Belarus to RWS.
And there you can see the tail of the tape for the first bout of the main card. I mean, this could arguably be the main event. You've got Tanan Chai, the Slim Reaper, last year's RWS champion at this weight. A weight, let's not include the fact that included last year, it concluded in Dobrishar was in there, Pet Morricot was in there, and Daniel was in there as well. For him to win that tournament last year was spectacular. The fact that he's on the verge of potentially leaving the tournament is unbelievable. So, Tanan Chai, the Slim Reaper from Thailand, 23 years of age, stands at 185 centimetres. Weighing in at 153.8 pounds and has a reach of 188 centimetres. He was born in Royet in Thailand. He has a professional record of 62 victories with 23 losses and two draws. Former amateur gold medalist, former Omnoy Stadium champion, and of course, the RWS 2023 Super Welterweight Champion. In round number one, he lost to Daniel Rodriguez. In the blue corner, Pavel Grishanovic from Belarus. They can see the table as it stands. Pavel with that knockout in round two over Reza, who has left the tournament. He has five points. Daniel on three with his victory over Tananchai. Tananchai and Rasising, of course, as the debutant, have zero points. So Pavel from Belarus is 26 years of age. He stands at 183 centimeters, so slightly shorter than Tanan Chai. He weighed in at 153.8 pounds, the same as Tanan Chai, has a reach that is the same, 188 centimeters. He was born in Minsk in Thailand. He has a professional record of 49 victories with five losses and two draws. A kickboxing champion known for his power and indeed not only did he win his previous bout via knockout but his very first bout here at Rajnamnern World Series was a win via knockout as well so he's two fights two wins two victories here in this company but that all-important victory last time outscored him that, those five beautiful points it's a big night here for Pavel Grishanovic because he, a win over Tanunchai, who's, let's face it, he's probably considered one of the top, well, top three, I would say, super welterweights in the world right now. So if Pavel can indeed get a victory, I mean, that, that will put him right up there. And we'll, we might be seeing someone who's gone from relatively relative obscurity to becoming one of the favourites but it is a big tough ask against someone who I think underperformed last time out let's see where he forms now in the red corner we've got Tan and Chai in the blue corner it's Pavel Grishanovic with the introductions it's Mr Beer Gentlemen, we are now entering RWS Russian Level Series Tournament 2024. Tonight we have four bouts of the Super Weatherweight Division and one more bout of RWS Undercard. It is time to start the first main card of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live for the Bird Pass of Muay Thai to over join the countries around the world. And this is Roger the Dead! Ladies and gentlemen, this part is our best tournament 2024 of the Super Weatherway Division in Group A. Introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Narin Pong Hee Run. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting of the Red Hunter, 23 years of age. He stands at 185 centimeters tall and weighed at 53.8 pounds. He holds a record of 62 wins, 33 losses and 2 draws. He is Ifwa, World Championship gold medalist and former Omni Stadium champion. 
and RWS 2023 Super World Award World Champion, representing Roy and Province Thailand, let's do it for Tanan Chai, the Slim Reaper, Sid Salvino! Of the new corner, 26 years of age. He stands 183 centimeters tall and weighed in at 53.8 pounds. He holds a record of 49 wins, 5 losses, and 2 draws. He is Belarus kickboxing champion. Fighting out of Belarus, the Silver Power, Richard Witch, Wontai Academy. Big fight feel and a very, very important one for both these competitors. If Pavel wants to make it through to the final four, a win tonight will do that. Tananchai is fighting to stay in the tournament. Straight away you can see Tananchai taking the fight to Pavel, looking for a big knee. Pavel though seems to be happy within the clinch, good knee of his own there. Both these fighters are plus 180 centimeters. This Tananchai is two centimeters taller, but one two there from Tananchai. Oh, good knee. I think Pavel was expecting that. <laughs> you see, it's an aggressive start here from Tananchai. He's trying to right the wrong. Oh! It's a right hand from Tananchai, potentially to the back of the head. Oh, oh big uppercut elbow. And once again, there's that knee one more time, evading that left high kick. It's like Pavel's trying to spin again. I'm not sure that's a smart idea. Good right hand there from Pavel. Tananchai chasing him. Left elbow from the Slim Reaper. Really looking for those extra points. Trying to get that knockout. Talk to some of the team of Sid Champignon earlier. Said it was a lot of pressure on their team tonight. Came in as one of the favorite of this tournament. Now not guaranteed to go through. Oh, oh another left and right hand. Of course, Tanachai made a name for himself with those uppercuts in his previous few fights. Oh. There's that elbow, knocking Pavel back. This is a tremendous round so far from Tanachai. Just reminding everyone in this tournament why he is last year's champion. Ooh. Oh, tempted high kick. Oh, oh. oh, good left hook there from Pavel. Time try. Needs to be careful. Made a mistake. He could go down. Oh, oh, oh. Not sure why Pavel wants to spin like that. Mm. Putting him in some tough situations. Oh, one, two from Tananchai. Tananchai looking in great shape tonight. Again with that right hand. Ooh. Stepping knee, working wonders. Another elbow through the guard there from the Slim Reaper. It's been a great round, like I said, from Tananchai. He's been very much in control. Oh, oh. good left hook. Tananchai needs to be careful. Pavel obviously has great confidence after that knockout over Razor. But I think in that round, it was all Tan and Chai. Mm. He's very confused, let's say, if it goes any other way than the Tan and Chai. One, two, three, ten, nine here in all the judges' eyes. Let's have a look at the highlights. Pavel spinning, walking into the trouble with that left hook and those big knees all throughout that round. A big difference maker. Knocking Pavel back against the ropes that time. Hey, he's searching for that elbow through the guard. A couple of moments for Pavel, but nothing really troubled Tan and Chai. Gentlemen, 
in the first round, all three judges start with 10 to 9. As we said, of the tournament, Tanunchai, Pavel, was Reza, now it's Rasisi. And of course, Tanunchai. All right, let's see what happens here in round number two. Oh, back fist to the body. Nothing that no. Tanunchai didn't expect, though. Exactly. Good knee to the body there from Tanunchai once again. Oh, and again. Oh, oh, oh. Good right high kick there from Tanunchai. Finding that left hand. Oh. And another knee. Pavel really struggling to defend those knee strikes that are coming in from Tan and Chai. All throughout round number one, and now here in round number two as well. Oh, and again. Tan and Chai knocking him back with those knees. Oh, and again, oh, oh, oh. left knee, left hand. Oh, how many more? Tan and Chai being oh. very aggressive right now. Now go through the guard. Pavel is struggling. Remember, this was the round that Pavel knocked out Razor in round number one. Missing with the low kick and another round ball through the guard. I'm trying to see if there's a cut on the forehead or not. I don't think there is. Just some hair. Another knee there from Tanunchai. So tough though. Pavel taking so much damage yeah, right for now. Sure. And another big knee, this time in the clinch. And an elbow strike there from Tanunchai. Pavel. Not really fighting back right now, he's just defending. I'm just waiting to land that left cook. And oh, oh right and down he goes. And that's what happens if you want to spin like that. This is it. Massive right hand, knocking down Pavel, and it's all over. Woo! A knockout in round number two is exactly what Tanachai would have wanted. Five points on the scoreboard for last year's champion. As he goes second in the table, a superb victory for Tanachine and indeed for Team Sit Song Pinong. Beautiful by the Slim Reaper. It was all about those knee strikes, Antoine. Left no options, no opportunity for Pavel at all. He was knocking him back throughout that round and then he, he rushed in. He knew, I think he knew that Pavel was done. It and he found like the perfect moment, countering that spinning technique, knocking down and indeed knocking out Pavel Rajshanovic here in round number two. Let's have a look at the highlights, the handiwork of Tanunchai. You should have seen the knee work there. Not sure why Rajshanovic was spinning. Mm. Completely unnecessary. Yeah, absolutely, especially at this level. One mistake. And you're out, and this, exact, this is exactly what happened. And a man who's famous for his, for his uppercuts throws in a devastating right hook. Here once again in slow motion. Chooses to spin, gets clips on the back of the head as well, and then straight into that right hand. That was beautiful timing from Tan and Chai. Bang, right on the button and a wonderful five point score for the Slim Reaper. Ladies and gentlemen, after one minute and 47 seconds of the second round, we have a winner by way of Nathan Red Corner. And the Slim Reaper, Sipso Congratulations to Tana Chai. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for RWS Tournament 2024 of the Super Battleweight Division. Introducing the current Russia Man Stadium Super World Award Champion and RWS 2022 Super World Award World Champion representing Switzerland and Dominican Republic. Please welcome Daniel the 
chosen one, Rodriguez! After what, nine months out of the ring, four weeks ago, the Daniel Rodriguez returned and put on a clinic against last year's champion. A big statement in the first round. And Daniel Rodriguez, the chosen one, looks to make it two out of two here tonight. The current Radkamern Stadium champion is back. And last year's, oh sorry, should I say the 2022 champion is looking to take away this year's title. opportunity was given to Rassisin a few months back and he got a victory over Jack Cooper in the post-win bout here on RWS and with Reza exiting the tournament Rassisin has took the opportunity and what a way to make your tournament debut to take on the chosen one Daniel Rodriguez it's a tough ask for Rassisin let's see how he does in this one And there you can see the tail of the tape for this one. In Group A, Daniel, the chosen one, Rodriguez, representing both Switzerland and the Dominican Republic. 26 years of age, standing at 185 centimetres. Weighing in at 153.6 pounds, he has a reach of 191 centimetres. He was born in Zurich in Switzerland. He has 44 professional bouts. 43 victories, just one loss. That one and only loss came in last year's tournament in the final four round against Jod Wichar, former WBC Muay Thai European Super Welterweight Champion, the current Rajnamnern Stadium Super Welterweight Champion and 2022 Tournament Champion. They can see what's next up on the 5th of October, Tananchai against Rasi Singh and Daniel against Pavel. In the blue corner, Rasi Singh, from Thailand, also 26 years of age, standing a lot shorter than Daniel, 10 centimetres shorter in fact, at 175 centimetres, weighing in at 153.7 pounds yesterday. He has a reach of 178 centimetres, so that's a 13 centimetre reach advantage for Rodriguez. He was born in Nakhon, sorry, Sakon Nakhon in, in Thailand. He has 91 fights to his name, 61 victories with 30 losses. Former WPMF welterweight champion, fought against Victor Hugo, against Razor, and indeed against Jack Cooper with that victory here on RWS. He's also fought on another promotion, Thai Fight, where he donned the rope hands, and he has two knockout victories from two this year on that promotion so combine that with the victory over jack cooper then he is three and oh in 2024 with two knockouts but no offense to his other opponents this is a huge step up for rusty singh It's always a pleasure when the chosen one is in town. With the introductions, Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout is RWS, Brazil the World Series Tournament 2024 of the Super Weatherweight Division in Group A. This is Muay Thai, this is Ratchanamdun. This bout is brought to you by Pumpkin and Train Rubicons. And introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Satra Supasai. And now, 
ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting on the red corner, 26 years of age. He stands at 185 centimeters tall and weighed over at 53.6 pounds. He holds a record of 43 wins and one loss. He is former BBC Muay Thai European Super Welterweight Champion and the current Rush of the Stadium Super Welterweight Champion and RWS 2022 Super Welterweight World Champion representing Switzerland and Dominican Republic. Let's hear it for Daniel, the chosen one, Rodriguez. Fighting on the blue corner, 26 years of age. He stands 175 centimeters tall and weighed at 53.7 pounds. He will record of 61 wins and 30 losses. He is former WPMF World of Wear Champion, representing Sakonda Corn Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Rossi Singh, Ayota Yo, Fox J. Daniel Rodriguez, Rassi Singh, second round of this year's tournament. Daniel has three points on the board. He's currently right, lying in third place. Of course, Dan Chai just going five points. Ooh. Nice right jab there, right kick from Rassi Singh, who knows he's already in a fight right now. Stiff hands from Daniel. He had a recent surgery to his right hand. Knocking Rasising back with that one-two combination. Oh, right high kick there from Rasising. Got the cut there from Daniel knocking Rasising back already. Daniel not waiting, waiting, or wasting any time. Whew. Low kick, then attempted left high kick there from Daniel. Rasising looking for a right kick to the body. Daniel looking to right hook counter strike. Another inside kick there from the champ from two years ago. Just that one loss on his record to Yobicha. He also has two wins over, let's not forget. Again, using that reach advantage. Mm. Ceasing, taking his time, seems to be worried about those hands. Yeah, and of course, struggling to close that distance. Right kick there from Rassisi. With Daniel just gaining in popularity as well. Most of the stadium cheering for him when he came out. There's that stunning left hand there once again from Rodriguez. <laughs> that time with the right hand, using like he's utilizing the jab. And again, one, two. Right now, the speed of Daniel is working out for him, as well as the accuracy in good middle kick there. Ceasing. Oh! 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 He's hurt! He's hurt! He's on ice right now! Oh! oh! oh left hook there from Rasisi! Another left hook! Oh, and Daniel stumbles as well! The left hook of the Rasisi, of Rasisi, the left straight hand of Rodriguez! Don't count out Rasisi just yet! Beautiful look, look up there from Daniel! Rasisi takes it! Once again, the uppercut! After that left hand, gets through the guard, and again that left hand. And it looks like we have a fight now. Daniel, more confident than oh, ever! Oh, kick! Rassisi taking so much punishment in this round. And the speed there from Daniel, almost impossible for Rassisi oh, to cover that. Swing and a miss there from Rassisi. I might take him Daniel's head off. 20 seconds left on the clock. Oh! Looking for that famous right hand of his. There's that jab once again. What a round of action we just witnessed. But for 90% of the round, it's been Daniel Rodriguez on the attack. So a glimpse of an opportunity for Rassisi. Rocking back Woo! Daniel at one point, but you said it, Ivan. Most of the round for Daniel. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely a round in favor of Daniel Rodriguez. Yeah, and of course, the only reason that he got caught with that counter strike is because he moved in for the kill. Incredible round of action and a beautiful round for Daniel Rodriguez. Let's have a look. 
stunning uppercut. And there you can see Rasisin was almost falling over. Daniel rightly so went in for the kill. Somewhere along the line, Rasisin was able to fire a shot back. I'm not sure if we get to see it though. Cool. Yeah, oh. The accuracy, the speed uh, from Daniel. He is money with that left hand. Like a surgeon. One thing's for sure, Rasisin is tough. It wasn't 90%, 10%, I think it was 95%. All right, let's see how the judges have scored it. Can't see it going any other way though than Rodriguez. There you have it, 10, 9 round in favor of the current Rajamur Stadium champion. Also see non-goal there. Yeah, non-goal. Yeah, non oh, also trades well. out of Superbunch Gym in attendance, giving support to Rodriguez. All right, let's see what happens here in round number two. <laughs> she's seeing fighting down on that good shield. Looking for that right high kick. Daniel finds him once again with that one-two combination. Left high kick there from Rodriguez. Interested to see what will be the game plan for Rassisi. Oh. Do you want to stay on the outside? Use that kick that you have to take in the speed of Daniel, or do you want to trade and go to war and perhaps open up an opportunity for yourself? With Daniel now in control. There you can see the punches. 35 that have landed for Rodriguez in round number one. Just seven for Rassisi. So fast. The season's still struggling, of course, way shorter as well. Has he thrown anything significant in this round? Looking for that right hand, perhaps. I think the way that Rodriguez as well moves around the ring. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nice kick to the body there. Oh, right oh, hand from oh, oh. The Now, going to trade. Oh, another right hand there. Daniel Doe. Right oh, hand. picking his Bam. shots. One of his ooh, famous ooh, hooks, ooh. and it's connected, and it's knocked out. Rossi Sieg in round number two. Rodriguez makes it through to the final four. That right hook is money all night, and he said it. I don't have the same right hand as I did. I have an upgraded version. Tonight, he just proved it. I have to correct myself. He's got actually through to the final four just yet, but with five points plus that three, it does put him on eight points. He'll only need a draw in his next fight against Pavel, but this man is looking extraordinary. Like Antoine said, with that repaired right hand. Valentine scoring the right hook knockout. Rodriguez scoring the right hook knockout. Eight points for the Rajadamun Stadium champion. Tremendous from Rodriguez. Let's have a look at how he did it there. Whew. Just over the left guard of Rossi And after he fighting many shots throughout that fight, it was finally that right hand that knocked out Rossi here on RWS. Here he is again. Rossi actually moved his head towards that direction. Rodriguez met it and finds five points for himself. 2022 champion marches on. Ladies and gentlemen, of the one minute and 19 seconds of the second round, we have a winner by way of knockout red corner. Daniel, the chosen one, Rodriguez! Congratulations once again to Daniel Rodriguez, who now tops Group A on eight points, Tan and Chai. And, uh, This is RWS Tournament 2024 of the Super World of Web Division in Group B. Introducing first.
Gabriel Pereira returns to RWS. So close to getting three points on the board. But unfortunately, got caught against Petmai in his last fight, which many, the fight was a draw. But he's got enough other opportunity here tonight to put things right as we welcome back Gabriel Pereira to Pet Fight Club. And his opponent, Fighting of Azerbaijan. Please welcome Ruslan, the body snatcher, Naki Yev. Ruslan returns after getting knocked out to Riti with our last time out here on RWS. He's looking to make a big statement here tonight and a win over Gabriel Pereira will do just that. Started well against Riti Wadar, but of course, with Riti Wadar's power, unfortunately, he did get knocked out in round number one, but he's back and he's ready here tonight. Welcome back to RWS, Ruslan Nagia. And there you can see the tail of the tape. Super Welterweight Tournament Group B. In the red corner, Gabriel Pereira from Brazil. 28 years of age, standing at 189 centimeters. Weighing in at 153.6 pounds. He has a reach of 194 centimeters. He was born in Porto Alegre in Brazil. He has 29 victories with 10 losses and two draws. South American Muay Thai champion and four-time Brazilian Muay Thai champion. Fought at RWS four times, two losses, one win and one draw. Some, fought some of the big names, Nayanesh, Tananchai, Reza, and of course, last time out, he fought Petmai as well at middleweight and indeed now at super welterweight. Ruslan Nagiev, otherwise known as the body snatcher. So with that, you can see group B, the Tiwira, tops the group. Gabriel and Petmai with that draw of one point apiece. Ruslan and Liet to score, of course. An opportunity. I'm sure him and his team will be seeing this as being the opportunity. Let's not forget the super fight will be taking place on Saturday, the 21st of September. Kunsuk Lek will be trying to avenge that loss to the current champion, Ryuki Matsuda. So the body snatcher, Nagiev, 187 centimeters tall from Baku in Azerbaijan, 20 fights to his name, 16 victories, four losses. With the introductions to this one, Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fall is RWS Russian Level Series Tournament 2024 of the Super Battleware Division in Group B. This is Muay Thai, this is Ratchet and Learn. This ball is brought to you by Chemical Fertilizer, Pua Mua Kantai. And introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Chanin Teb Supan. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first. Fighting of the Red Corner, 28 years of age. This land at 189 centimeters tall and weighed with an 53.6 pounds. He holds record of 29 wins, 10 losses, and two draws. He is South American Muay Thai champion and former attack fight champion and four time Brazilian Muay Thai champion. Fighting of our Brazil, the Turin Bar, Gabriel Ferreira, who gave fight glory. And 
is support fighting of the Blue Corner, 25 years of age. This stand at 187 centimeters tall and weighed him at 53.4 pounds. He holds record of 16 wins and four losses. He is NGF champion and Cindy Stadium champion. Representing Azerbaijan, let's hear it for Ruslan, the body stretcher, Norgiev. Well, we've already seen two knockdowns, or two knockouts, should I say, in the tournament, in our main card. Let's see what this bout has in store. Ruslan Nagiev fighting really to survive right now. Gabriel Pereira probably frustrated with, with the fact that he only got one point against Pet Mai. He was in full control of that fight. And he just got caught right to the end. Right at the end of round number three. So unfortunate for him. Hey, Ruslan started well, just similar to how he's starting right now against Riti Wadar before he got caught. Got great footwork coming from that bo uh, kickboxing background, of course. Oof. That's coming from Azerbaijan, same place as Chingiz Alavaz. Oh, that yeah. area of the world, really Ooh. making some incredible fighters. Left hook there from Gabriel. Sneaky for him, oh. a big right hand. Catches him. I was about to say, Gabriel has been caught before. Ruslan will know his weakness. Of course, Pet Mai is so shorter than probably all the others here in this tournament. You can see now these two look huge. Already a warning shot for Gabriel. Oh, Whoa. right hand, right high kick. Good combination from Ruslan. Popping that left hand. Oh, oh spinning oh, back oh, kick oh. to the body. Okay, good job that. Gabriel is uh, sporting that eight pack. <laughs> Gabriel really taking his time right now, perhaps too much. Already halfway through the first round. The speed, the speed of Ruslan already paying off. Yeah. Keeps looking for that left hook, Gabriel. Yeah, the ref will call for more action, of course. <laughs> oh, oh ho, ho. another. Right hand, right high kick combination there from Ruslan. And a great round for Ruslan, and I think he knows it now. Moving around the ring, it's Gabriel who's taking the fight to him at the moment. Right kick to the body there. And again, looking for that right hook. Gabriel holding on. Big elbow attempt. And again with that elbow, combining it with the knee strike. Not really fighting oh, back at all. Again, big elbow strikes. Ruslan not happy about that. Yeah, he needs to stay disciplined though. Stay focused, stay in the fight. Much better work from Gabriel, but somehow st moving back once again. Left kick to the body there from Ruslan. Inside kick to that right hand. Swinging overhand right. Pereira managed to grab a hold again and deliver some good knees to the body once again. Really having the upper hand there in the clinch. Was it good enough though? Was it enough work or the power shots from Ruslan? Yeah, I think for the majority of the round, Ruslan Nagiev was in control. But there were some good moments within that clinch there for Pereira delivering some good knees and elbows. But I do think that Nagiev in the blue corner will have done enough to take it in the eyes of the judges. Let's have a look at the highlights. Beautiful spinning back kick to the body there. And that combination he threw a few times mm. on each and every time it worked, but there was those elbow strikes to the top of the head. Woo. Nicely done there from Nagiev. Yeah, but that right kick, right hand combination. Oh. oh. Pereira meaning business with those elbow strikes. Mm. As the referee tries to separate, let's find out the judges have called it. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, all three judges, 
Skull Red Man, Blue Ten. Yeah, he is. He's one of the training partner. All right, All round right. two. Ruslan is up. Whew. Nice low kick there to off balance. Gabriel Pereira then sneaks in the left hand. Does Ruslan Nagiev? If you're Pereira right now, you want to close the distance, get into the clinch, or you have the advantage. Oh! Of course, you don't want to get hit with the right hand. Massive right hand knocking down Pereira. He looks frustrated Whew. with that. I think he's trying to tell the ref that he was just off balance, but unfortunately for him, the referee still counts. I'll have to see on the replay. Massive right hand from Brussels, either way. Yeah, it's inconsequential now. It will be a 10-8 round. Oh, another big right hand, knocking back Pereira. It's been a few times already. There you can see it was pretty close in round number one, the Absolutely. amount of strikes that were scored that landed 32 to 30. Right high kick there from Ruslan. Ruslan waiting for Gabriel to throw a kick or low kick and counter with that right hand constantly. Perhaps another entry weapon will be needed for Gabriel in order to get into the clinch and here comes the right kick again. It looked like Ruslan was about to spin there, throw a spin. Back fist, I think. Oh, left hook! Once again, Pereira has gone down! Too much speed, too much power, and too much accuracy coming from Russell. It will be a 10-7 round now, as, as it stands. One more knockdown, and he oh. is out. Ruslan, very smart though, still taking his time. What's going on with these second round knockouts here tonight? I know. Unbelievable. Are we about to see a third? Pereira, hanging on. Keeping that guard nice and high. Oh, 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 oh. right hand there from Pereira. Another right hand over the top. And and this is it. Goes Gabriel Pereira. And once again. A second round knockout here tonight. A great performance by Ruslan Nagiev, who is rewarded with five points. Tremendous <laughs> for the man from Azerbaijan. Three knockdowns. It means it's a TKO victory. But he will take back with him. We won't see him again until the October 2nd, of course. But he completely dominated round number one. I thought we saw the fight geek actually said it was 32 to 30, but a pretty clear round number one in my eyes. But an even clearer round number two. Three knockdowns from Ruslan Nagiev. We knew he was talented. He didn't get to show it really in his first fight against Routine with R, but in this fight, he certainly did. Beautiful right hand. And there, it was a right hand and a left hook that knocked down Gabriel Pereira. He then moved in for the kill and once again, he found that overhand right that stumbled and knocked down Pereira for a third time. Let's make it official. After two minutes and four seconds of the second round, we have a winner by way of knockout blue Tony Ruslan, the body snatcher. It is time for our US Tournament 2024 of the Super Bowl Division in Group B. Introducing our US 2023 World of World Champion.
representing Surin, Thailand. Please welcome Rick Tevada, the Sondam Angel, at Jindy Academy. Rick Tevada, last year's World Weight Tournament Champion, returns. The Soma Sam Angel looks to pick up more points and make his way through to the final four. And that will be done on one step closer with a victory here tonight. The pride of Pet Yindi Academy, the Tiwada. And his opponent fighting from Chumpong, Thailand. Please welcome Pet Boy, the Axeman, Son Holland to win. The Axeman looking to chop down Ritty with our hit to a night. Former professional a boxer will be taking on someone who's known for his hands. Let's see how Pet Mai fares here tonight as he returns to RWS Ragnam Nurna World Series. Tape for your main event here tonight at Super Well to Wait in Group B. Ritiwada, the Som Atam Angel in the red corner from Thailand, 28 years of age, weighing in at 100, sorry, 153.7 pounds, standing at 180 centimeters. He has a reach of 182 centimeters. He was born in Surin in Thailand. 87 victories with 16 losses and five draws to his name. Former Channel 7 champion, former Lumpini Stadium champion. Never won the Rajadam Nern Stadium title. 2023 RWS Tournament Welterweight World Champion. In the blue corner, Pet Mai from Thailand. Now you can see the next round of action. Ritiwada will be taking on Gabriel Petmai against Ruslan on the Saturday, the 5th of October. So Petmai is 25 years of age. He stands at 178 centimeters. Weighed in yesterday, 154 pounds and has a reach of 178 centimeters. He was born in Chumpon in Thailand. He has a professional record of 100 fights, 75 victories with 22 losses and three draws. A former Rajnamon Stadium middleweight title contender, currently ranked number one in the stadium rankings at middleweight. So Ritiwada, he has his own brand of Muay Thai shorts clothing called Muay Tiwada that he has a business with his Good lady, Nam Tan, who used to be a professional Muay Thai fighter in her own right. So if you ever want to get in contact and make your own custom Muay Thai shorts, then you can follow Muay Tiwada. There is Nam Tan and there he is, the owner of Pet Yindi Academy and indeed the promoter of Pet Yindi Promotions, Boat Pet Yindi. So we've had three fights in the tournament so far and we've had three knockout victories in round number two. It's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out. Two fighters who are incredibly talented with their hands. Going head, locking horns. It's a fight that without RWS you might not see, to be honest. A clash of styles and of course Pet Meyer has been competing at middleweight the last few months that we've seen him here on RWS. 
Let's see what our eight and one in RDBS currently riding a seven fight win streak with four knockouts to his name. He was also voted last year's MVP, which meant that he took away a beautiful new motorbike. Pet Mai, he's four, three and one in RWS. Two, four, three and one, or oh, three, zero and one in 2024. Brought some of the names that you're familiar with here in RWS. Gabriel Pereira, Nyanesh, Fort Tananchai, Razor. He's also fought in RWS Japan as well. See another packed house tonight at the first purpose-built Muay Thai Stadium in the world, the magnificent Rajdhanun Stadium. All right, main event of the evening. We've got Thailand taking on Thailand with Tiwadar, the Som Tam Angel in the red corner and the Axeman, Het Mai in the blue. With the introductions for the main event, Mr. Beer. Ladies and gentlemen, this boat is RWS Russian Learn World Series Tournament 2024 of the Super Vertiware Division in Group B. This is Boy Thai. This is Ratchet of Learn. This part is brought to you by Leo Soda. And introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Tirasin Sira Rasakun. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first. Fighting of the Red Connor, 28 years of age. He stands at 180 centimeters tall and weighing at 53.7 pounds. He holds a record of 87 wins, 16 losses, and 5 draws. He is former Channel 7 champion and former Lumini Stadium champion and RWS 2023 World of World World Champion representing Surin Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Ritewada, the Sultan Angel, the Jindy Academy! And his opponent, Fighting at the blue corner, 35 years of age. He stands at 178 centimeters tall and weighs 154 pounds. He holds a record of 75 wins, 22 losses, and three draws. He's former WBA Asia Boxing Champion and Rush on the Stadium Middleweight Title Contender, representing Chumphon Province, Thailand. Let's hear it for Pat Moy, the Axeman. So call it to we want to know. Round one of a scheduled three. Will it go past round number two is the question. Let's find out. Oof. Left eye kick. The toughest challenge ever for Pet Mai. Plus it was Ritiwadar's debut at this weight just a few weeks ago when he made that Woo. statement knockout against Ruslan in round number one. Oof. To say once again, the team are looking in tremendous shape and looking like a natural, dare I say, super welterweight. Absolutely. The right kick there from Pet Mai. Oh, off balance a little bit. The still needs to be careful. Going down to Pet Mai with that left hand. Ooh. It's that left kick that's doing the damage. Good block there from Pet Mai. Really looking to avoid the big shots coming from Ritsabada so far. Now known for not being very active early on. Usually wakes up 
in the <laughs> later rounds. That's certainly the case last time that we uh, saw Pet Once Minor again. Mm, against the uh, Gabriel Pereira. Right at the end of round number three, he scored that knockdown to make it a draw and get that one point that he currently has. As Retiro now moves in. Gonna set things up with that left kick. Pet my struggling at the moment. He is indeed in the speed from reach of that big combination. Yeah, now you can see he's just trying to wipe the cobwebs away from his face. As he got stung with a four-piece. No cheer for Vito Bernardo. Not at all. Snapping right hand, left kick. Swinging right hand there from Petmai. Of course, let's not forget Vito Bernardo. He's been dropped here. Yes, no he has. has before, I say. Still got to be careful. Yeah, and that, that's, that was that welterweight. Beautiful combination, spinning back elbow there Ooh. from Ritiwada. Causing some issues here for Petmai in round number one. 30 seconds left on the clock. Been a troubling round for Petmai. Taking some big shots from Ritiwada. He has survived, don't look at him. It's never just one shot, is it, with Ritiwada? He loves to throw those combinations. Completely confuses his opponents. Mm. He pet my wary, doesn't really know what to do at the moment. But he does survive around at number one. I'm pretty sure he will be Ritiwada. He scores the 10-9 uh, round on all three of the judges' scorecards. Tremendous start from the Somtap Angel. How do you like your Somtap? <laughs> Are you a fan? Uh, it depends on the days, I'll say. <laughs> My wife loves it, at least. Yeah, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Beautiful combinations here from Rissi Wadar. Opening up the guard, Pet Mai doing everything to cover up. And indeed, he does survive round number one. Good defending from Pet Mai. Almost getting clipped with that left high kick, but his glove was just in the right position. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, all three judges star rated. Blue nine. All right, let's see what happens here in round number two. Of course, Pet Dam, he fought in uh, Samui on Wednesday. Teammate. All right, second round. <laughs> the danger rounds of this evening's RWS. <laughs> Another left eye kick there from Ritiwadar. Perhaps time to wake up for Pet Mai. Oh, and here he comes. Oh, beautiful team. You already know Pet Mai has got the power he needs to knock out any opponent at this weight. Let's not oh, forget though. What a combination there from Ritiwada. He can't find the head, then go to the body. Oh, Ritiwada has competed in amateur boxing before. There you can see the head, body, and leg strikes from each of the fights. Only Pet Mai throwing two strikes to the legs. Ritiwada on top when it comes to the body and head strikes. Pet Mai only connecting one time to the head. Hey, that might have been two there. <laughs> Thanks once again to a fight geek for all those great stats. Pet Mai still on the back foot though. Oh! Pet Mai struck through! Pet Mai rocked. Really struggling right now. I think it was Daniel Rodriguez, wasn't it? Last time out, after his victory, he's saying, what are we waiting for? It should be just me and Rati with our in the final. <laughs> Big statement, yeah. considering Talan Chai huh? is still part exactly. of this tournament. Absolutely. And Ruslan Nagiev doing great things as well, even though he did get knocked out in his first fight against Rati Of course, there's Pavel as well, who will be trying to make it through. Tempted knee there from Ritiwada. Pet Mai completely on the back foot right now. 
really struggling. But like you said, Antoine, he is an, a notorious slow starter. He usually doesn't really wake up to number three. Somebody like Richard one round. Might or might not be too late, we'll find out. But so far, Petmai doing Petmai thing. Oh, good right hand there from Petmai. Richard Faster than ever, even though he put up some weight. Yeah, absolutely. Great point. He's kept that speed that he had at welterweight. He's been able to maintain it at super welterweight and looks like he's added some muscle and some power to his arsenal. Another combination, left, right, and a left kick. But as we know, Petmai, incredibly tough. And even after getting clipped with all these big shots, doesn't look compromised. Looks like the referee wants to tell Petmai to move forward. Oh, big elbow from Ritiwadar. But once again, Petmai able to take it. End of round number two. I haven't said that in a while. And see what are, but once again chasing, probably on top, probably wins the round. Pet Mai still in it. Let's have a look at the highlights from round number two. Left kick from the see what are. Beautiful team off balancing Pet Mai. There's that hook, or two hooks through the guard. Pet Mai doing his best to defend. <laughs> Beautiful left and right. From the Somtam Angel, completely in control after two rounds of action here on RWS. A win will, of course, extend his lead at the top of the group to nine points. If indeed it is by decision. And there you have it. Two and the second round. All three judges. Score red 10, blue 9. And for the total score, all three judges score 20 to 18. To the final four. Third and final round. Of course, there's one more bonus bout after this. Time to wake up for uh, Petmai. Here he comes. Uh, Petmai doing Petmai thing. <laughs> Waiting for the third round. Now pushing forward against somebody like Ritabada. With his experience, though, will he let him? Yeah, I mean, he could walk into a trap that's been set by Ritabada. But like you said, Antoine, I think Petmai will take a little bit of risk here, as he needs to do. To left eye. Oh, a big right hand there from Petmai. Again, swinging right hook. So leaving the world oh, and again, to right wonder hand. why does Petmai not do this <laughs> since the very first round? There you can see the overall strikes landed from each, each fighter. 44 Ritiwada, 21 for Petmai. Probably already landed four or five extra shots here in round number three. He could add to that total. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Antoine. I'm not sure why it takes Petmai this long to get going. But he is talented and he has got great hands. Look, you see, he's still got the energy to move around the ring. To... Surely does. Hasn't been working too much this fight. Uh, both fighters fighting like they're in a boxing fight. Yeah. Of course, both having experience fighting in boxing. Seems like Petmai is. Oh, good right high kick. Don't think Ritiwada was expecting that. Ritiwada going through the motions. Petmai going back even though he sure is why. losing. I'm not sure why he's doing that. Throwing away his chance. So we move to the tournament format. Two groups of four, A and B. First place of the group will face the second place of the other group in the semi-final or the final four as it's known. 
So the Tiwada, because he's in Group B, he will either face Tanan Chai in the final four, Daniel, or Pavel. And Pavel, of course, losing by a knockout here earlier on in the second round to Tanan Chai. Oh, jumping right kick from Pet Mai. <laughs> it will be Pet Mai against Ruslan. What? No, sorry. We've already had that bout. <laughs> it will be Ruslan taking on Pet Mai. Reeks over there on another oh. level right now. Showing speed, uh, footwork, and confidence, and a happy Pet Mai somehow. Yeah, unfortunate for Pat Mai, but he does survive, and maybe he's thinking he can try and take out Ruslan in his next fight and make it through to the final four. But Ritiwada is in the final four. The first fighter to officially book his place in the semi-final is Ritiwada, the Somtam Angel. Nine points scored overall, a six-pointer in his first fight of knockout victory over Ruslan and a decision victory here against Pet Mai. Three easy rounds really for it, would I wins rounds one and two with ease and then he just makes sure of his victory against Pet Mai in round number three. A professional job done by uh, Ritiwada. All right, folks, we'll make this one official and then we'll have our bonus bout up next here on RWS. Ladies and gentlemen of the three rounds of Muay Thai action, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges scored is about 30 to 27. Planning your winner by way of unanimous decision. Red Corner, Red Telada, the Sultan Angel, Hatchin D Academy. Ratiwada takes one of the four places in the final four. Congratulations to him and indeed everyone at Pet Uni Academy. A great night of super welterweight action. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the last vote of the event. Introducing first, fighting of our Bangkok, Thailand. Please welcome Saidania Luk Sai Kong Den. Saidania Luk Sai Kong Den returns to RWS. A famous family, of course, in the sport of Muay Thai. Her sister Nao Prajan. Once made it through to the final of this tournament, and indeed Ada, her other sister, made it through, I believe, to the final four. But Zydania, maybe, maybe, will find herself in a future RWS tournament. In the meantime, she's competing here and enjoying herself in our final bout of the evening. Pikun Tong has fought twice before here on RWS. Unfortunately for her, suffering two defeats. Is it third time lucky for Pikun Tong? Let's find out as she makes her way to the Rajnam at Stadium Ring. The final fighter who indeed makes her way into the Rajnam Stadium Ring this evening. Welcome back, Pikun Tong, to Rajnam World Series.
Final tail of the tape. Zidania looks like Gong Dim from Thailand. 17 years of age. She stands at 161 centimeters. Weighed in at 113.1 pounds, well under the female flyweight limit of 115 pounds. She has a reach of 157 centimeters. She was born in Bangkok, Thailand, right here. She has a professional record of 31 victories with 18 losses and five draws. A national amateur Muay Thai champion. She has wins over Kao Kanok, Danielle, and indeed, Pikung Tong. She's 1-0 in RWS this year, winning at 109 pounds, so really fluctuating going through the weight classes. In the blue corner, Pikung Tong from Thailand. 22 years of age, standing at 160 centimeters, weighing in at 115 pounds. She also has a reach of 157 centimeters. And she was also born here in Bangkok, Thailand. She has a professional record of 31 wins, 22 losses and one draw. They can see the looks like Gong Ding clan. Senga Tit in the middle. You've got Zidania's mother to the left. I think Naupajan was behind as well. Who I believe is just now she's pregnant with her. No? Is that Maybe, a joke? I'm not, no, <laughs> I don't think she's pregnant yet. I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm Maybe sure she I is. She just got married, media. that's for sure. I thought I saw her on social media something. All also right. why she's not competing anymore. She, I believe, is completely retired now. Unfortunately yeah, for saw, us. I saw the announcement that she has retired from the sport. But they post so many videos, all of I them. Know. Maybe I got it <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> of course, a big family of fighters and a big family of Muay Thai influencers. Absolutely. You've got to give credit to the father, of course, who started all this creating a, a Muay Thai gym in his back garden to get people in the area away from doing bad things, let's say, and concentrate on becoming Muay Thai fighters. And indeed, not only that, but in the meantime, he had 16 children. <laughs> and I think all of them in some capacity Absolutely. have been involved in the sport of Muay Thai with many of them becoming fighters. And many of the girls have become super high level. And Sangha Titi, we saw in the corner, I think at once upon a time, only maybe last year, yeah. was ranked in the top 10 of the, uh, not the IBF, was it? WBA? WBA. WBA. Trained at, at the Mayweather gym as well. Absolutely. He so. hopes to get his career back on track sometime. He's a tremendous boxer. Final bout of the evening. Two females, Zidania and Kikung Tong. With the final introductions this evening, Mr. Beer. Gentlemen, this bout is RWS Rajamnur World Series on the card. This is Muay Thai. This is Rajamnur. Introducing the referee on stage, Mr. Porramir Tukti. And now, ladies and gentlemen, introducing first, fighting of the red corner, 17 years of age. She stands 161 centimeters tall and weighed in at 13.5 pounds. Chi Ho Rick on 31 wins, 18 losses, and 5 draws. She is amateur Muay Thai national champion representing Bangkok, Thailand. The children go, Sai Dania, Luke Sai Dong Ding. And the opponent fighting. Of the blue corner, 22 years of age. She stands 160 centimeters tall and weighs 115 pounds. She holds record of 31 wins, 22 losses, and one draws. Representing Bangkok, Thailand, let's hear it for Pitun Tong, Sabrina. Well, if there's a fighter for looks like Gong Din, you know there's going to be a a lot of fans in attendance. That is the same here tonight for Zidania. Round one of the schedule three. Teep there from Zidania. Ooh, left kick to the body there from Pikung Tong. 
Low kick from Zidane in reply. Another tee. Nice Ooh. left kick, left hand there. Oh, right hand from Pickham Tom. Another low kick. Of course, two new rounds for women. Oh, low, nice low kick there from Zidane. Both of these fighters looking for low kicks earlier on. Oh, big left hook from Zidania, that rock pick up Tom. We've seen the power in the hands of Zidania in the past here in RWS. Strike. He's getting stronger. Oh, oh big left hook. Oh. Pick up Tom, he's rocked. John was counter struck there with a big elbow oh, here, but Zidania trying to finish the job here in round number one. Oh, and a big elbow. Zidania moving in for the kill with under one minute to go on the clock. Pickleton doing the right thing here and grabbing the hold. Good block there from Zidania. Pickleton showing good strength though, pushing forward and oh, oh. both fighters in fact connecting with right hands that time. Zidania more dangerous than ever now with her hands. Low left kicks. Great round for Zidania. Oh, left up to the body. Nikon has to be careful when she rushes forward like that. No counter striking that time. And oh, round number one. Fast pace from mm. these two. But I do believe Zidania will look good enough in the eyes of the judges to take that one. Especially due to the fact that she rocked Pikuntong in the middle of that round. Let's have a look at the highlights. There's that left hook. Exquisitely timed. And there's the right hand as well as she grabbed a hold of the leg. Oh. You can see that her brother's a professional boxer with those hands. Stunning work from Zidania, looks like Gong in. There was a nice elbow on the Counter-Strike though, from Pikuntong. But like I said, I think Zidania will have done enough. Ladies and gentlemen, in the first round, all three judges. Star red 10, blue 9, two. Oh, another left hand there from side. And again, Ooh. that left hook, footwork, oh. spinning back elbow attempt. Pickle Tom desperately trying to close the distance. And when she does that, oh, another big right hand there from Zidania. Zidania. Getting faster every fight. Mm. Oh, oh, there's that left hook once again. How many Beautiful times? Check hook, now followed by the right hand. This is great work here. Snapping left hand. Oof. Of course, let's not forget her footwork right now. It's definitely one of the key factors. Why is Idenia able to land so many oh. shots? Once again, looking for that spinning back elbow. Look at Tom. It's not able to get close enough. And when she does, it's that check hook, like you said, Antoine. Just footwork and a beautifully timed. Left hook that's causing Pickle Tong all sorts of problems in this fight. Knee strikes there from Pickle Tong. Oh, oh. And once again a one-two from Zidania. A big knee strike to the body. Just more accurate with us and better shot selection as well from Zidania. 
even more confident as the rounds go on. And there it is again. That left hook. Working wonders. Oh, oh. big spinning back elbow from Zidania. And I think Pikuntong ate all of it. Yeah, Pikuntong not advancing. End of What's round number two. And once again, you'd have to think that Zidania takes that one. Mm. Great round for the girl from Luxai Gong Din. And I'm sure 15 siblings will be looking on in surprise right now. Pretty much more of the same in round number two. They've got better footwork be on display from Zidania. That was a right hand. Great on the nose. And there, the left hook. Moving around the ring very nicely indeed. And not to be out clinched either, delivering some good knees to the body. There was that spinning back elbow, I believe. It's a little bit quicker, as evident there from that highlight. Oh. Yeah, just deflected off the shoulders. But it did connect. Don't get it twisted, baby. I snatch souls. If he murders, she wrote one, two, three, let's go. I see you stand. Ladies and gentlemen, the second bar, all three judges. Now, let's head, Luna. One for those star, all three judges, star 22, 18. What we saw in round two, great footwork and boxing skills from Zai Adania. Just two minutes for Pick and Tong to do something incredibly special to try and eat at least take a draw away from this fight. Let's see if she can do that. Third and final round of the fight and of the evening here on RWS. Nice to start with the teeps. Left jab there from Zidane, knocking the head back off Pikun Tong. Pikun Tong at least gonna try and make it difficult for Zidane here. Oh, oh, that might have been oh, the oh. best left hook she's thrown. There's that teeth again, just making sure Pick and Tong doesn't get too close. Beautiful footwork yeah. again, rotating around. He's getting much oh, better and better. Oh, oh. Oh. Pick and Tong just <laughs> completely outclassed so far. Just keep up pushing with, forward. You can't keep up with the speed, and like you was talking about, Antoine, the footwork especially. Of Zidania, who's just looking more and more in control and like she belongs here at Rajnamna Stadium. It's a little bit demoralizing and deflating for Pick and Tong. Mm. The way that Zidania has controlled this fight once again, looking for that spinning back elbow. One minute left of the fight. Very interesting. Zidania looking forward to seeing her. Perhaps next year's tournament, who knows? <laughs> it could be. Jumping deep there for Zidania. And we're also, we're also wondering, oh, another spinning back elbow, the second of which has connected. And we're also wondering when they might, or if they are planning on introducing more weight classes and title belts for the ladies as well. Because Zidania could probably make 112 pounds. Absolutely. She made 108 last time. 20 seconds left. I think there is a ranking now for 105 pounds, mm. if I'm not mistaken. But a job well done there for Zidania. Oh, looks. Oh, right hand for Pick and Tong. But it will be Zidania who gets a hand raised once again. And there you can see Looks like Gong Ding team cheering on with approval. The victor here tonight, Zidania. This is, without a doubt, the best we've seen of Zidania looks like Gong Din. Incredible boxing. I'm sure a brother will be in a corner, very pleased and sci-fi by the way she performed here tonight. Let's have a look at the highlights. There was the spinning back elbow in round number two. The left hand doing the business. And there in the third and final round, another spinning back elbow in pretty much the same position of the ring.
wonder if Rotang and Ada are watching on from Argentina. All right, let's make this one official and then Antoine and I will be going through the tournament group stage tables and indeed what's up and coming here on RWS. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of Muay Thai action, go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges. Score is about 30 to 27. Declaring your winner by way of unanimous decision. Beautiful performance to cap off a tremendous RWS event. Lovely sports show of sportsmanship as well there between those two girls. All right, we'll take a quick break and then. Another great night in the history of Muay Thai and another great night for the Super Welterweight Tournament. And now we will get to know who will go home and who will go through, even though there's still one more round to go, Aaron. Yeah, let's have a look at those tables. So Daniel, top of the group now with two wins out of two. Pavel and Tananchai on five points after both having two knockdown, uh, knockouts in round number two. Rassi Singh, unfortunately, on zero points. Over in group B, Riti with our books a place in the final four on nine points. Ruslan with that knockout in round number two on five points. Gabriel and Petmai on one point each. There, next up on the 5th of October, Pavel against Daniel, Tanachai against Rissi Singh, Petmai against Ruslan, and Ratiwada against Gabriel. Next week, it's the welterweights, the third round of the welterweights. Depau Gao will be taking on Senpon. We've got Erdem Dinger returning this time. He'll be taking on Chu Jaron. Hercules, he'll be taking on Max McVicker from Australia. And Yobbichar will be taking on Sajak. The upcoming events all over the world, we've got the, on the 14th of September, the super lightweights return. Pet Tong Chai against Kun Han Lek. Dan Paranchai will be taking on Alfie Pierce. And then a mega event on the 21st of September, a super fight between Kunsuk Lek and Ryuki Matsuda, as well as the featherweight and female bantamweights of Group A. And then on the 28th of September, we've got Som Ratsumi against Mary, Samingdeng against Ruek, the featherweights and the female bantamweights of Group B take to the ring. If you're ever in Bangkok, make sure you come enjoy the experience here in Ratchanana Stadium. But if you're not, every Saturday on The Zone, make sure you watch RWS because this is Muay Thai and this is Rajaraman! <laughs>